Hi, we're here at Brands Hatch Circuit for the Thundersport GB 2016 season. Today we're at round one and we've got the Golden Era Superbike and Supersport. Welcome to Thundersport Plus. Yes, welcome to Brands Hatch for round one. Thanks to the girls there at the start, Kirsty and Sarah, the twins. They'll be with us all the way through the season. Golden Era Superbike, Golden Era Supersport. But first up, we have action from the A&R Racing Pre-National Sport 600s and the Selco 600 Freshman. There's no changes in specification of bikes for those two classes. They're all on one grid. Basically, there are freshman riders within this. Uh, freshman meaning rookie, I guess, in, in a way. But they are riders on a novice license a lot of new names here not just for you at home to look at but for myself as well here in the commentary box uh, although uh, joe lawrence there is at least one that i do recognize number 888 so a new season and a new champion will be crowned at the end of it the champion of course of last year darren ibbotson moves on to the sportsman elite there's a new opportunity waiting for one of these riders so many entrants this weekend here in this 600 class and away from the line we go and down into turn one let's see who it is that will get the whole shot as we head up towards druids there's around 30 or 40 bikes there that are going up there it's number 63 adam darnell that has the advantage ahead of number 70 he was just getting a bit sideways there gareth thomas and then you can see orange bibs are plenty as well heading around Druids for riders that are in their first full season of racing or pretty much novice riders. And now into Graham Hill Bend, number 10 there in the middle of the pack, Sam Holm from Elvington on the, the Kawasaki. But it is a very, very good start indeed for number 63, Adam Darnell from Dorchester on the AD Racing Yamaha. He's got himself well over half a second there already as they make their way around clearways and head on to the start finish straight just got a glimpse of a rather bright looking bike there number three rich richardson from kingswood on the uh, classical racing yamaha i wonder if he's listening to classic fm in his uh, helmet there as well as he goes past the start finish line this is a really good start from uh, adam darnell in third place there is number 108 matt dawes See, Liam Helliwell is a regular with Thundersport GB. Keep an eye on him, number 59. Cousins with Chris, who will be coming up later on in the Golden Era Super Sport race. Uh, in fact, that will be the race coming up after this one, after the break. So keep an eye on uh, uh, Liam. I think he's got a silvery green. Yeah, he's going through there. I can just about get a glimpse of him. He's got the inside line as they make their way around clearways now. All of them trying to catch up with the uh, early pace setter Adam Darnell. Good start from Ben Watton as well on the try at Fashley Milburn not too far away. Lloyd Shelley I see got off to a decent start. Triumph's going well here at Brands Hatch this weekend but it's Adam Darnell uh, number 63 that has this advantage. That's almost, well that's like over two seconds already now as Lloyd Shelley moves up into se uh, second place now. Number 19 ahead of number 70 Gareth Thomas and there goes Liam Helliwell trying to find a way through and move himself up into third place. In fact is there a problem there for number 70 Gareth Thomas? He just lost a place and looked like he was losing a bit of speed on the Cooper Strait quite sure what's happened there. There is uh, Liam Helliwell and Joe Lawrence ready to pick up the pieces in case it goes wrong. Joe Lawrence number 888. Across the line we go and it's still Adam Darnell that leads. Lloyd Shelley's moved into second and is closing the gap down now. Number 108 there on the Kawasaki MD Racing's Matt Dawes. There is Darnell then. The old uh, Nakano replica helmet. Then 19 Shelley. There's Helliwell in fourth place. And yeah, Gareth Thomas is dropping like a stone here out of the top three. Now out of the top five. To Graham Hill Bend goes number 108, Matt Dawes. 
from a place called Studley. I've never heard of that before. I'll have to have a look and see whereabouts that is. But what a great place to come from, Studley. There's number 84 just making up a place. It's Ben Watton from Sleaford uh, on the very bright uh, Triumph there. Can never quite work out what colour that is. It's sort of luminous red, luminous orange, something along those lines. Um, I'm pretty sure that Robin and John, the circuit commentators, will be saying that it's uh, it's pink. Oh, and that's not the fastest way around that part of the circuit there. Who's that? He's gone grass trekking. Dodgy place to be going on the grass there. Number 61 and a, no oh, and a novice bib as well and almost got his nose taken off around Clearway Corner. Well, that's a heart-stopping moment for Mark Smith on the THR Motorsport Triumph. And if that was me, I'd have gone straight into pit lane there, parked it up and found the nearest toilets because that was nearly carnage uh, as he went across the grass and then got his nose wiped out. There we see number 93, the yellow and blue bike. That's Adam Gittings from Manchester, uh, who uh, coincidentally is sponsored by Selco Builders, who uh, are the backing and sponsors for the Freshman 600 class within the pre-nationals here. So uh, Adam uh, riding, easy to spot that one. Always nice for a commentator. 888, Joe Lawrence you're seeing just going around. Clearways there, bit of chatter coming from the front end as he's being followed by Ben Watton from Sleaford. But out front, it's still Adam Darnell after that blistering start. Then in second place, Lloyd Shelley. Further back there as this gap comes down at the front. Uh, Liam Helliwell trying to get himself closer to that podium position. He's chasing down Matthew Dawes. Again, we see Ben Watton there on one of the brightest bikes out in the field. There's Gareth Thomas, number 70, who's really been dropping down since making a very good start. Just up behind him there, number 65, Ashley Milburn from Swaddling Coat uh, on the Triumph 675. And now that gap really has come down, and the lap times certainly are telling a story because Lloyd Shelley's are consistently two or three tenths quicker than Adam Darnell. And now we go on to the start finish straight. Adam Darnell, who has been untouched. Uh, and unmoved since the very first corner is about to find some company and it goes around the outside and I'm not sure if he'll have an answer to that. Lloyd Shelley moves into the lead and the rest of the pack are now closing as well. So Adam Darnell faces a bit of a challenge here to stay on the podium full stop. Number 80 we just see there, Stephen Kimmings from Orsett on the Yamaha. Now then, there's Shelley, there's Darnell, there is number 108 Matt Dawes and then the silver and green machine of Liam Helliwell followed by 888 Joe Lawrence on the JDL Racing Yamaha. Around Graham Hill then we go. This is one of those horrible situations if you're Adam Darnell at the moment. You've been leading for so long, you get caught by one rider and then you've got this lot here. You're probably already thinking about, what am I gonna say in my interview with my trophy? Well, at the moment, top three might not be on. He has got some riders hunting him down as they make their way onto the start finish straight once more. Across the line we go, out front, it's Lloyd Shelley on the Shelley Racing Triumph. He now makes his way up towards the Druid's hairpin. There's a back marker in amongst them as well, just to point that out. Adam Darnell still in second place. Steve McMillan, that is, uh, that's actually just uh, being lapped there. And there is a switch as uh, Joe Lawrence makes his way through on Matt Dawes. So Matt Dawes has fallen back a place. Uh, Steve McMillan there just being uh, overtaken by him, so he's not part of the top five equation. Who will get themselves on the podium here? Liam Helliwell at the moment fancies it. He's in third place. He's looking to try and now get second, as we see Ben Watton also getting in on the action. Further back, we see there number 48. That's Alex Lorries. He's just uh, with Stephen Kimmings out on circuit. Will Harper as well. At number 85 is Neil Goodson on the Unraceables Yamaha. Now, up into Druids we go. Yet more traffic, and that's Joe Lawrence coming around the outside. Number 888 of Liam Helliwell. Great move for him there. There we see number 25, Adam Shepard, uh, just being overtaken into Druids. It's all going off here in the closing stages of this A&R Racing Pre-National and Selco Freshman 600s. So it looks like Lloyd Shelley will be our race winner, but who's going to be in second? And look at this, look, Liam Helliwell there, just on the inside of Joe Lawrence. Where's Adam, D Adam Darnell's just up ahead of them again now. Adam Darnell 
has just got the advantage over them. It's Lloyd Shelley uh, so far that has the lead. This is very difficult to pick up, but Adam Dunnell on the last lap there is just in second, number 63. 59 is Liam Halliwell, 888 is Joe Lawrence. They're the riders that you need to look out for, and this could get a bit busy on the final lap, and Matt Dawes is there as well. The checker flag will be out at the end of this uh, at the end of this lap as Matt Dawes there tries to fish his way through some tail enders as well. There's Adam Darnell then. He's lost out to Liam Heliwell. He's now moved up into second place. So 59, Heliwell's up into second. 63, Darnell down to third. We go into 30s. It looks like the race win is going to go the way of Lloyd Shelley. And now... Out of Darnell is got a bit of pressure from 888. Joe Lawrence, they're going wide round here, and Joe Lawrence has got a problem, and that's not a great place to stop. He's out of the race by the looks of things, and he's not even going to make it easy to the finishing line. The checkered flag goes out. Lloyd Shelley wins it. Then a bit of a wait for second. Liam Helliwell, number 59, takes second place. Adam Darnell third, and in fourth place, Matthew Dawes. So in the end, quite an eventful fight for the podium. A shame, though, for Joe Lawrence. And I can tell you that he has completely come to a standstill and will not score a single point. Better luck to him next time in race two coming up. Here's confirmation of the top six. Lloyd Shelley, the winner. Four seconds ahead of Liam Helliwell. Then Adam Darnell, Matt Dawes, Ben Watton and Ashley Milburn. On the podium there then, you see Lloyd Shelley, the happy race winner, ahead of Liam Helliwell on the left and Adam Darnell. And the freshman, Daniel Jones, the winner, from Alex Lorries and Neil Goodson. Lloyd, lovely win there in the sunshine. Tricky yesterday for you, but today you look like you were on it, mate. All come together. Bad day yesterday in the rain, couldn't get a set up, but spot on today. Yeah, happy. We weren't expecting it, don't get me wrong, but I'm happy, mate, yeah. Have you got some people to thank? Yeah, uh, FWR Flooring, uh, APH Electrical, Trey Tyres, Midlands, and uh, of course, most importantly, me mother. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. That's me a lot, yeah. Dan, a new class for this year, uh, Selco, 600 freshmen. But, I mean, it was lovely to see you get a win in. Eh? You must be happy in the first uh, round of the year. Yeah, really happy. I'm glad the freshmen come in sort of this year for me and uh, just glad I can pick up a win and get, get a few choices hopefully on the way. Well, the trouble is that the pre-national before became a victim of its own success and people needed you know, something to get them off the ground, but uh, this is a great start for you. Have you got some people to thank? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the bike was in bits earlier, so Matt and Gary at Spotlight Racing put it all back together, got me out in the race, and uh, Aidy Bridges borrowed me his van and, and uh, sort of get me into racing, so yeah, thank you to everyone there. Join us again after the break for the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Sports and Steel Sports. For the first time this season, we get a glimpse of the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Sport and Steel Sports. Two races here today at Brands Hatch, the opening round of the 2016 season. There is number 68, Nick Wainwright from Beverly on the Paints Fiction Racing Yamaha, looking to try and get himself the championship this year. Number 11 is Gordon Wright. Good to have Gordon here. Uh, Gordon uh, started out with the super, uh, Street Fighters with us. Uh, travels all the way from uh, Bonnie, Scotland to race with us. Looking forward to seeing how he gets on in this class. A few other names that you may recognise, just nearest to us there, Mark Biswell, another ex-Street Fighter rider, number 35, and Chris Helliwell on pole position. Chris, of course, has raced with us now for a number of years, number 64, and he's going to get the whole shot. He has to be seen as one of the pre-season favourites. He's been at the front and the sharp end of Formula 600 races and Superstock races for a number of years now. Luck always seems to be the biggest problem for uh, uh, Chris Helliwell and, of course, funding as well. The same uh, age-old problem for a number of riders out there. As we see, just going around uh, Druids, there was number 96, Ian Evans from Chepstow, one of our British Army regulars. Mark Biswell has done a good job of turning out that... Uh, on the CBR, that's a steel frame machine. Don't forget we've got Super Sports and Steel Sports for the steel frame bikes. Now the steel frame machines pick up Golden Era Super Sport points overall, but they have their own separate class as well. Last year's champion, Chris Spink, 
uh, has uh, moved on, isn't in this class for this year. And likewise, in the steel sport overall, sorry, in the super sport overall, uh, Carl Foster, last year's champion, who's a lap record holder here, uh, isn't in this class either. But there's a number of new names and a number of uh, other familiar faces to account for. There's one, Andy Whale. He raced in this championship last year, but they're all going to try and chase down Chris Heliwell here, the Sparklight Racing Yamaha rider. Beautiful bikes still, those Yamaha R6 uh, with the upside down forks. Still looking as good as ever. Further back there, number eight, Carl Foster. Oh, he is out. Wow, OK, well, I've surprised myself there. I didn't think Carl was racing, but Carl Foster, the reigning champion, is out there. Sorry, Carl, I missed you. Um, he's up just behind number 68, Nick Wainwright. Ryan Cooper, who was a regular feature last year in the top three or four, is also out on circuit. Number 16 there with a bib on is Luke McRae. He's just up ahead of uh, number 57, John Good. Another name, I just saw number 56 going through there as well. Phil Cox, father of Sam. Nice to see uh, him also getting himself out on this circuit as well. Not too far for them to travel home, Molden. Uh, not a million miles away from this uh, first round of the 2016 season. They're all going to have to try and catch this guy up, though. Carl Foster, the reigning champion, is now up to second place. Interestingly, Carl Foster, having won last year's championship, would have had the option to sport the number one plate. Didn't, but has also changed his number anyway from last year. I don't quite understand that. Uh, but uh, there we go. Two wins yesterday for uh, Chris Heddy, well known as Skid Marks. Um, not entirely sure why he's known as Skid Marks, but hopefully we won't find out anytime soon. And uh, he's teammates with uh, Gordon Wright, who was known as Flash when he was in the paddock uh, a couple of years ago. They're teammates and they're both on hired machinery from Sparklight Racing, who of course are the sponsors of this class overall, uh, Gary Coons. Uh, spark lights, so uh, I'm sure Gary's uh, watching. Gary did have a little play himself um, uh, not too long ago, but uh, he's obviously decided that uh, for now he'll just keep watching. There's number 68, and that is Nick Wainwright up ahead of Ryan Cooper. Cooper, who was successful in the final round of last year's championship as well. There's Sam Nicholson. Sam uh, racing out again, the rider from Nottingham on the Motor Point Derby Yamaha. Good to see him out there. They're really struggling at the moment to keep up the pace of Chris Heliwell. Let's see what lap times he's doing in correspondence to last year's. A couple of tenths off at the moment, Carl Foster's lap record, but then you could argue that at the moment he's not really having to push it too hard. He's got a four or five second advantage. There's Carl Foster, Nick Wainwright and Ryan Cooper all together. There they go across the line. They're all fighting it out then for second place. On board here with Skidmarks Heliwell, number 64, as he makes his way past a bit of traffic. Now into Druid. Oh, there is an awful lot of traffic. And here he goes. He's just tiptoeing his way round past some of these, giving them as much room as possible. This is the battle for second once more. Nick Wayne right there, number 68 on the red and white Yamaha up ahead of last year's champion, Carl Foster. And then Ryan Cooper from Leeds on the Coops Racing Race HQ Yamaha R6. So once more, just like last year, the bike it seems to have is the Yamaha out front. Gordon Wright still inside the top six along with Andy Whale. Dave Langley at the moment is the, the highest non-Yamaha, if you like, one of our Royal Air Force riders, Dave Langley, on a steel frame bike. In fact, he and John Good at the moment, both on Hondas, are battling it out for steel frame victory. Uh, so our eyes on where they end up as we just see Sam Nicholson once more heading round. There's number 14, Brad Davey, uh, on a slightly different coloured bike to what we're used to seeing him on. And this is the battle for second. Just going on there, Carl Foster just getting held up a bit, going around Druid, so he's lost a bit of ground last year's champion. That might just cost him a bit here as he tries to get himself onto the podium uh, on the first race for TV day. If he wants to defend his crown outright, he's going to have to find an answer for Chris well, Chris, who's racing out there on Avon tyres. Again, uh, like other classes in Thundersport GB, there are prize tyres. On Saturday, if you finish on the podium in this class, if you're running Avons, you'll get a free front tyre. Uh, and on Sunday, which is today, Mother's Day here at Brands Hatch, if you finish on the podium and you've got Avons on, you get a free rear tyre. So uh, everyone's a winner. Well, if you're on the podium, that is. <laughs> uh, here in this class. A number of different tyre manufacturers offering up different deals for the weekend and it's just a nice incentive to add to it. 
Uh, anybody that knows a motorcycle rider knows one thing. Um, they will quite happily take whatever they can get. And so if there's some free tyres going, that's an extra incentive to find a few extra tenths a second per lap. I know, because I used to be one. Uh, there is number 68, Nick Wainwright, uh, Wainwright, at the moment in second place. And uh, just up ahead of Cooper there, there's Carl Foster. Now, ever since Carl got just tangled up a bit at Druids, he's just struggling to hang on to the tails of the two guys in second and third place. Chris Halliwell's still home and dry at the moment, leading this one by over five seconds. Here he is on the Sparklight Racing Yamaha. I'm not completely sold on the burgundy, metallic burgundy colour scheme uh, just as yet, but uh, hey, if it works for you, then it works for me. And at the moment, it's certainly working for Chris Halliwell. We're on board with him now. These are these uh, the camera that he's got on and these glasses that he wears. Uh, when uh, out on circuit, uh, not sold on them either just yet, but of course they, they bring you the video footage, but when he comes in, they're, they're glasses without lenses, very Eric Morkham um, by the time he arrives back in Park Ferme. Last lap flag is out, Chris Helliwell then can cruise home. Now let's see how the battle for seconds getting on here, they come, second still to Nick Wainwright, third for Ryan Cooper, fourth for Carl Foster. Will it stay that way between now and the end of the race as Helliwell here tries to find his way through a few more tail enders. Further back here, it's 57 and 16. It's John Good and Luke McRae. And at the moment, 57 there. Uh, John Good is still just about on for a podium. In fact, yeah, he's going to get the podium in the steel frame. He's not going to beat David Langley, I don't think. He'll get the steel frame win. He's in seventh place overall. Mark Biswell uh, is inside the points and is on for a podium as well. But the outright win, I think, is going to go the way of Chris Halliwell. Carl Foster's not going to get himself on the podium here. The reigning champion has work to do in 2016. Good win there then for Skidmark's Halliwell. He takes the third win out of three here in the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Sport and Steel Sport class. Ahead of Nick Wainwright, Ryan Cooper, Carl Foster, Flash Gordon Wright and Andy Whale. And confirmation that finishing in seventh and eighth place with the top two in the steel frames as well. David Langley and John Good. There's the top three overall then. Helliwell, Wainwright and Ryan Cooper. And in the steel frames, Langley, Good and Mark Biswell. David, first round of the year, TV day, first TV day, and you're a winner. Wow. It's awesome. Uh, thanks to all my sponsors. I never thought I'd be here. Uh, Nick Ashton's of Ashton's Body Shop, the RAF MSA, um, Barcon Engineering, Westcatech. Thank you very much for getting me here. Hopefully more of the same, guys. Cheers. Chris, what can I say? What an opening weekend. You must be absolutely delighted. It's made different than the last couple of years and let's be fair it's been terrible uh yeah brilliant mate absolutely uh new tires new uh i run with gary at last meeting last year uh just working obviously again gary's put up a lovely bike for me again and i just bolted from start because i know some quick lads in this category so i just i think it was fastest warm-up lap ever as well uh i just went just watched the pit board so i'm reeling me back in one lap and then I just put a couple of quick laps in and I broke them again and yeah, I can't believe it won again, that's three, wow. Uh, happy Mother's Day Mum. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, I'm just, I'm took back by it as well, you know. Uh, I just try, after all the bad luck I've had in a couple of years, I might have found something that we're all right at here. Well, I know you're on the uh, Avon tyres deal with the, uh, you know, the winners taking podium tyres, etc, etc. And who else do you want to thank? Yeah, definitely Avon uh, for all the help. They've, they've, we've been working on some stuff, to be fair, to try and get these competitive and then lads to be up with the other makes and manufacturers. Uh, I'd also like to be like, uh, thank PC Kelly. They've come this weekend as well, top notch. Uh, IMH recruitment, recruitment. Uh, Ian Baldy, Superbike Photographer. He's doing my uh, promo stuff this year. Uh, Wilson Windows, you can see me looking at bike here, sorry. Uh, Spotlight, obviously, put the bike together. Barry Coker. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Uh, and commercial fleet services, uh, Knox. Uh, and uh, I think that's it, mate. I'll be honest with you. If I turn around, you might get a cut. If I've missed anybody, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I thank you to all them. We are them lot and 64 Club. Without lot that putting helping me out, I would not even be here today. Coming up after the break, it's the Dimag Golden Era Superbikes and Munex GP1 Freshmans.
Race one of 2016 for the Dymag Golden Era Superbikes. Dymag wheels, of course, have been around for some time. Beautiful wheels. I used to have a set myself uh, back in the uh, the day. Now, there's a familiar face on the Golden Era Superbike grid. Nick Williamson, number six. Good to see him out there. The reigning champion is there as well, ever present with his number one plate on his back seat Yamaha, John Dieterman. Very much the man to catch for this year. Richard Blunt also out there, chasing him down just like last year. Someone got a terrible start there. Bogged it on the start line, but luckily didn't get collected by anyone. All eyes should be, in theory, on Dieterman and Blunt again to take this one all the way down to the wire. But you just never know. Over the winter, one or two names will hope that they've managed to find something uh, so that we'll have a different situation and a different outcome. Certainly the likes of Ryan Strafford and uh, Nick Williamson will be looking to put that right. Not sure whether we're going to see anything of Andrew Windsor, who I think at the end of last season certainly stood out as being one of the biggest improvers in the class. Uh, certainly he's not on the list here uh, this weekend at Brands. Maybe he'll be somewhere in the future. There's another regular there, number 48. Uh, is Richie Harrison brother was successful in the maiden season of the Thundersport 500 back in 2009. Of course, Golden Era Superbikes, bikes from the Golden Era. Uh, I like a little programme piece that Dave Stewart has written here for Thundersport GB. When traction control was all in the wrist action. I won't add to that. Uh, there is Sir John Deaton and then the champion, number one, up ahead of last year's runner-up, Richard Blunt. In third place, number 71, Richie Thornton from Surbiton. Uh, on that Kawasaki ZXR7. Richard Blunt, slightly more retro looking leathers as well for this season on his Portico Sport Kawasaki, I like that. Uh, very retro indeed. And still though, chasing down this man here, uh, John Dieterman, who excelled in the class last year. It was a shame really, it wasn't quite the battle we wanted down to the wire because there was bad luck for both riders involved. A few different faces in this one though, 79 and 91. 79, Rob Watt, we've seen him in the class before, but different colour scheme. Uh, 91, Matt Streeter from Norwich. Um, so uh, Matt Streeter there is one of the freshman riders. Uh, there's a GP1 freshman class within the GP1 class at Thundersport this year, but there's so many on the grid, we couldn't physically get them there. And at Thundersport, they don't send you home packing if you don't qualify. You will get a race somewhere. And so uh, a number of GP1 freshman riders uh, are out there with the Golden Era Superbikes here at the moment. They'll have a job catching the front Golden Era Superbike boys though. John Dietzman it is at the moment that leads and is flying out front. The lap record is actually Richard Blunt, so 49.5. Track temperatures are not really allowing the same here today, but Richard Blunt himself is a good 1.6 seconds off his own lap record pace, so maybe not starting uh, quite the same as he did last year. John Dieterman uh, looking to pick up where he left off, really, and defend this crown successfully for 2016. There's number 34, Adrian Teasdale, out there on the vanglass.co.uk Suzuki. Very nice looking bike indeed. And this is the battle for second, the Portico Sport Kawasaki there. 13 of Richard Blunt, just up ahead of uh, Richie Thornton. Another rider who's been in the class in and out for the last few years. Richard Stedman is out there as well on another Yamaha number 35. Keep around for him. Just saw Continental rider Ryan Strafford, uh, number 57 from Murfield. Of course, former Street Fighter champion. First season in Golden Era Superbikes last year on the Honda. Just plagued with bad luck and a few crashes here and there. And I'm sure he's hoping to put that right here this season. Uh, backed by Continental all year and a tyre manufacturer who are looking to help out as many people. Look at that look. There's a, an interesting pit board for you. Richie, plus five, stay cool. <laughs> nice one. I'm sure that's what he's thinking in his head. Stay cool indeed. Oh dear, oh dear. There's number 89 and 19. 89 is Giles Long. 19, Paul Stonebanks. A couple of new names for you here in the Golden Era Superbikes, but it's a familiar one that leads with the number one plate as well. John Dieterman. Rider from Preston, the backseat Yamaha. Travels along with his, uh, with his father to all of the rounds and various family members. Very much a privately run team. There is Richard Stedman on that Yamaha. And he's making 
pretty good ground up at the moment, Richard Stedman. His lap times are quicker than Richard Blunt's and a few others around him. Dave Sellers is also going well, by the way. 169 on the Kawasaki in the DSR racing back to machine. Richie Harrison's up inside the top eight. Nick Williamson, as I mentioned before. Further back, leading the GP1 freshmen's Andrew Pollard at the moment on the G8 racing BMW. Uh, so uh, keep an eye on him. You might see him at some point shortly as they head into Druids once more. There is 169 Dave Sellers, as I mentioned earlier on. Um, Dimag Wheels, who are sponsoring this class for 2015, will be available from Sparklight Racing at big discounts, so I'm told, from Donington Park onwards. The next round of the GP, that's actually taking place on Easter weekend, or Saturday testing, Sunday, Monday race days. Um, Dimax for GP1, 600s, Golden Era Superbike Super Twins. So, uh, any of you interested, go and see uh, Gary at uh, Sparklight Racing, and uh, he'll certainly try and uh, help you out there. But Dimag Wheels, nice to have them on board sponsoring this class. John Dieterman looking focused, though. The defending champion uh, doesn't need to get hot bothered at the moment because he is just clearing off. Just over six seconds is advantage now from these guys. Richard Blunt in second place and then Richie Thornton. Richard Blunt's going to have to be careful here. He doesn't fall into the trap door because the guys behind have been going quicker. Stedman in particular has been making ground up uh, and is lapping a good half a second quicker than Blunt. And it looks like number 71 there, Richie Thornton, knows about it. He was asked to stay cool a minute ago. He might not have to stay cool for much longer. There he goes, up the inside, into second place. And Richard Blunt has gone down into third place. And in a moment or two, I fear he might drop off the podium altogether as they head up towards Druids. I don't know if they've got a pit board on Richard or not, but Stedman is looking at threat there in second place. Richie Thornton it is then. Number 71 that moves into second place overall. None of them have got a cat and hell's chance of catching John Dieterman out front, but these podium positions are going to be precious here. But a yellow flag waving there as they en enter and approach 30, so no overtaking there. Not sure what's happened. Uh, maybe someone gone down there going into 30's corner, but here's Nick Williamson, Richie Harrison. Looks like it might be Matt Streeter that has gone down. It is Matt Streeter that's gone down, so hopefully he's OK. John Dietzman it is, though, that leads as he goes through a bit more traffic. There is 169. Dave Sellers up ahead of Nick Williamson and uh, Richie Harrison. They're all inside the top eight overall. Baxi heating Yamaha looking in fine fettle once more. It was one of the bikes on show at the NEC in Birmingham for Sun Sport GB in the winter. And uh, a huge thanks to uh, the few days that I spent there for giving me the most awful cold that I've had in a long time as well. The NEC, packed full of germs. <laughs> uh, there is a change here now. Richard Stedman is going to go around to the outside here of Richard Blunt. That's the long way round, but that's a lovely move by the Yamaha rider. And we are coming to the closing stages of this race. Richard Stedman looks like he might just snatch the podium place away from Richard Blunt now. Dieterman here then, the race leader who runs Dimax himself, now starts his last lap. This is the battle for third you're looking at. Richard Blunt was in second for probably 85, 90% of this race and has now dropped back a bit. This is Nick Williamson. He's coming under some late pressure now from Richie Harrison. But Dieterman's home and dry. He could, in fact, roll off here and probably still make it over the line as the race winner. The defending champion is back to his old tricks. Brilliantly done here from the Preston rider. He wins race one here in the Golden Era Superbikes. A little wave of a cap there just on the side of pit lane indeed. There in second place is going to be Richie Thornton and Stedman will take third. Richard Blunt, a little disappointing there and I'm sure he won't be too happy with fourth place. And then further back, Sellers in fifth, Harrison in sixth. Harrison did get Nick Williamson then on the line. I can tell you that Andrew Pollard finished in eighth place overall and was the first of the GP1 freshman. Confirmation then on your screen there. Pretty easy, wasn't it, for John Dieterman here in the Dimag Golden Era Superbikes race one on TV for 2016. And there's your top three. John Dieterman, centre of your picture. On the left, Richie Thornton. On the right, Richard Stedman. And then the freshmen, Andrew Pollard, the winner from Batner and Hollingworth. John, last year's champion, tricky day yesterday, 
but you're back on it again. Yeah, it was a tricky day yesterday. Um, we had to pull out at one race because of the Nixon fault. The next race, it was wet and it wasn't very nice at all, but we got the bike sorted and it was a good race then. I really enjoyed that race. You're back on a mission then to uh, take the championship again. <laughs> Um, I really wanted to come up with two wins today this Sunday, so the next, next race um, we'll see how it goes, but I'm feeling confident. Who would you like to thank, John? I'd like to thank Back Seaton, um, Dunlop Tyres, uh, Michael Holbeach, uh, Dynamag Wheels as well. Um, everyone's been on board this year, it's been fantastic. Andrew, new class we've got this year for GP1, freshman class, for guys that have just started, and you've gone out and won it first uh, TV day, can't be bad. Yeah, first TV day. Yesterday was really difficult, really slippery. Came off in race one, missed race two. But today, had difficulty getting off the grid. It keeps jumping out of gear. But yeah, we got there in the end. That sounds pretty good to me. I mean, that's not, uh, you know, you, you, you could have worse weekends. Course, yeah. Have you got somebody to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank uh, Ian Rhodes from Roads and Track in Northampton, who does all the bike set up for me, and uh, the pit crew in the form of Philippa who seems to have abandoned me now. We'll be back after the break. Race two coming up for the ANR Racing Pre-National Sport 600s and Selco 600 Freshman. Race two for the pre-national sports 600s brought to you by ANR Racing and the Selco Freshman 600 as well. Uh, they're not really separate classes, they're just, there's certainly no difference in some of the bikes out there. A few of them are stock bikes, some of them are tuned, but basically freshmen are the riders that are, are on novice licences in this class, as well as, to be honest, the pre-National 600 itself for riders that are yet to attain a national licence. So they're the novices of the novices, if you like here with Thundersport GB. Earlier on we saw a win for number 19 Lloyd Shelley with Liam Halliwell number 59 in second and 63 Adam Darnell in third. What will we see here? Adam Darnell got off to the best start earlier on and he flies through into second place here into turn one. It looks like uh, Matthew Dawes is going to get the whole shot and then Adam Darnell goes around the outside of him into Druid's corner. So Adam Darnell back through his old tricks again. Last time he didn't manage to stay on top. It got a bit messy towards the end. Lloyd Shelley fought through on his triumph to take the, uh, the lead. Cleared off really by three or four seconds and then this epic scrap for third place. Uh, endured between the three men actually that are on your screen at the front of this race at the moment. Adam Darnell, number 63, 108. Uh, that doors and Liam Halliwell, number 59. Right, well, it's going to take me probably a couple of rounds to get used to who everyone is and what colours they're running. So uh, apologies in advance for any mistakes. Just in behind the top three there is number 65. What a move that was around the outside. In fact, Matthew Dawes has gone from first to third there into Paddock Hill Bend, that's not the way to do it. Uh, in the background is 65 and 70. They were up there at the start of the first race, Ashley Milburn and Gareth Thomas. Thomas, however, did fall back outside the top six by the end. And Liam Helliwell here planting a move on Adam Darnell down into Graham Hill Bend. Liam Helliwell, cousins with Chris Helliwell, who you would have seen in the Golden Era Supersport a little while. So, so far, it's looking like it could be quite a good day uh, for the family. Liam Helliwell, however, never had a race victory as yet, uh, whilst at Thundersport GB. There was Lloyd Shelley, around about 7th, 8th place, the race one winner. Got a bit of work to do yet again here. And the grid positions are denoted from Megalaps. These guys had two races yesterday here at Brands Hatch. It was uh, pretty soaking wet. And so it's created quite an interesting pattern on the grid. So some of the riders that you might expect to see fighting for the championship have had to do a lot of work from further back on the grid. There's Ben Watton on that bright red, pink, whatever color you want to call it, Triumph. But it's uh, Adam Darnell there who's in second place at the moment with that Nakano replica helmet trying to chase down race leader Liam Halliwell who at the moment looks like he might just want to check out up the inside no not quite there for Matthew Dawes Gareth Thomas is now back up there as well that white and blue machine number 70 then you've got number 65 Ashley Milburn from Swaddling Cope but then of course Lloyd Shelley the race one winner number 19 coming through as well big group of riders Ben Watton 
is at the back of that pack. Now, if they're not careful here, Liam Halliwell could quite easily clear off and win this by some distance. Lap record, by the way, a 49.5. Track temperatures are pretty low here. You can just see, can't you, from the camera angles here and from the, the odd shots of the sky that it's not a particularly warm day. Track temperatures are down, and so we're not expecting to see the lap record of a 49.5 broken by Dean Mulkey. That was going some, let me tell you, for a class like pre-nationals, that is a quick lap record. I'm not sure that will get beaten for a year or two as yet. They're lapping at the moment. Well, Liam Helliwell is the only one into the 50s. Uh, at the moment, this lot are just tripping each other up, as you see there, number 65, Ashley Milburn just going quite wide and losing a place to Ben Watton. Across the line goes the leader then, Liam Halliwell, followed by six or seven bikes, led by Matt Dawes and then Adam Darnell just hanging it around the outside. Lloyd Shelley's making up a bit of ground though in the pack. Further back, number three is Rich Richardson, number five is Chris Curtis. So there's your race leader, Helliwell. Now the battle for second going through. Oh dear, and that's Adam Darnell who's gone down. And uh, that's Gareth Thomas who he's taken with him down in there. Now that was an odd, odd crash. Uh, it's sort of whacked into number 70 there. And Adam Darnell's gone down and out of the race. So he won't be on the podium again. Difficult to know exactly what went on there. But either way, it's, uh, it doesn't change who leads the race. Liam Helliwell got this one comfortably so far. Second place then is Dawes, and then Shelley, then Ben Watton, who seems to have capitalised and closed that gap down considerably after uh, what's just happened out in front of him. Gareth Thomas, I understand, has rejoined the race, uh, having got himself out of the gravel, but he has got a bit of work to do now to finish inside the points. A number of different riders here move there from number 91. That's Neil England from Newbury just uh, going up the inside to make up another place further back. In fact, that moves him up into 12th place. Uh, let's have a look who else is up inside the top 10 at the moment. Daniel Jones, Liam Dale, Alex Lorries. Uh, all three of them are actually the top three freshmen at the moment, just inside the top 10. You're looking here, though, at Matt Dawes and Lloyd Shelley. Lloyd Shelley, of course, the race one winner. Doesn't look like he's going to get two wins out of two because even if he gets past Matt Dawes here, he's got about five, six seconds to find on Liam Helliwell out front. And let me tell you, Liam Helliwell at the moment, as comfortable as he looks and as good as his lap times are, here he is, number 59. If you've not had a race win before, <laughs> this will feel like it's going on forever. He's not got himself a battle at the moment. He'll be going past pit lane going, where is the last lap flag? <laughs> it might only be Brands Hatch Indy, but uh, 12 laps for these guys at the moment. We'll feel like a lot. There was a lot of chattering going on the front end there of that drive, but Lloyd Shelley eventually gets his triumph stopped and moves up into second place. Further back there is 48, 5 and 3. 48, Alex Lorries, as I mentioned, then is leading the um, fr freshman class. Number 5, Chris Curtis. Number 3, Rich Richardson. What a moment this will be for number 59, Liam Helliwell. In racing a similar amount of time to his, brother, uh, to his cousin Chris. Uh, of course, they remain very, very close. But Chris certainly had more of the success. I wouldn't go as far as to say that Liam's been overshadowed by Chris when it comes to racing, but Liam's probably not... It's taken a little longer to get into his stride, but certainly looks to have come of age here, uh, and he's well on his way to picking up that first race win. Number 59, we're talking about Liam Halliwell from Nottingham on the CFS Racing Kawasaki. Further back there, uh, we see Ashley Milburn again up ahead of Ben Watton. This is the battle for second. 19 is Lloyd Shelley from Burntwood on the Triumph. And then 108, Matthew Dawes from Studley uh, on the MD Racing Kawasaki. Helliwell then a bit of traffic to deal with. At least that takes his mind off how many laps are going down. That gap at the front, by the way, just come down a bit. Which just tells you that the nerves might be flowing through uh, Liam Helliwell at the moment. It's not an alarming amount. He's still got a good three or four seconds on these guys, but it just on that last lap creeped down a bit since Lloyd Shelley got himself into second. Of course, once Lloyd got out front earlier on, uh, nobody could catch him. So not surprising to see him now finally up into second place. Good racing here, though, from Milburn, number 65 there. Further back, this is a big scrap going on for the remaining points. Will Harper was up there as well. Uh, somewhere along the lines, there's about seven or eight riders split by about two seconds across the line just a moment ago. Liam Helliwell here 
And this is the great thing about this class. Liam Helliwell, of course, was a novice himself once, so he knows exactly what it's like to be lapped. Now he's learning his race craft on how to cope with lapping riders whilst winning a race. Very, very different indeed. Last lap flag is out as he puts a lap on Lewis Brooks there. And he'll be relieved as he goes down Paddock Hill Bend to see that there aren't millions of riders left to get past. There's still a few going into Druids, but he's got a big enough gap there. He should be comfortable. He should be home and dry. Lloyd Shelley in second. Probably got just a bit of about enough of a gap there to hold on to that. Five or six tenths ahead now of Matthew Dawes. And just a few corners left then for Liam Helliwell. Oh, we have a retirement. Uh, Stevie Elliott. Stevie Elliott's gone down, one of our Royal Marine riders. That's a shame to see on the last lap of the race. But let's all just take a moment to congratulate Liam Helliwell. Oh, Lloyd Shelley there getting mixed up with a tail ender. And that might just make second place a little more hairy than it was already. The checkered flag is out and you've done it. Liam Helliwell picks up his first race win with Thundersport GB. And in second place across the line just Lloyd Shelley, the race one winner, has to settle for second this time. Matthew Dawes was in third. And look at the celebrations here from Liam Helliwell. There are sure to be tears down in Park Fermi with the Helliwell family. Congratulations to you. And, uh, well, you never know. They might come like buses now. But Liam Helliwell, the race winner, ahead of Lloyd Shelley, Matt Dawes, Ben Watton, Ash D. Melbourne in fifth, and Adam Shepherd in sixth. Top three on the podium then. A very happy Liam Helliwell ahead of Lloyd Shelley and Matt Dawes. In the freshmen's, it's Daniel Jones ahead of Liam Dale and Alex Lorries. Championship standings then going into the next round. Three-point lead for Liam Helliwell ahead of Matt Dawes, Adam Darnell third, Lloyd Shelley fourth, Ben Watt fifth, and the freshman Liam Dale sixth place overall. Liam Dale, of course, leads the freshmen's overall ahead of Daniel Jones, Alex Lorries, Neil England, Andrew Evans, and in sixth, Mark Smith. Liam, first win at the first round 2016. Wow, I mean, to be fair, you've had a really good weekend already, but this just is the cherry on the top, isn't it? Yeah, we had a bit of wet conditions yesterday and I ate the wet and got two first, so that was a bonus. And today I was hoping for top five, get a few points in the bag for the next round, but I ended up getting a second and a win, so it's absolutely amazing. What a start to the season. I mean, it's almost like you've suddenly become of age, isn't it? You know, all the rest has been practicing really for this. The first two seasons we had the funding to do a full season, but now we've got to come back in from commercial fleet services, which gets us back in to do full nine rounds this year, which has helped out massively. So I matured over the last two years and now hoping we keep more of this. And have you got some people to thank now? Yeah, I want to thank you. Massive thanks to commercial fleet services, Paddy Flanagan for helping me out for this year. Uh, 720, Wilson Winners, One Stop, Easy Grip, all my friends and family who come for me, my girlfriend, and I just want to say a massive sorry to my mate Joe, who's had much luck with his bike today. Coming up after the break, race two for the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Sports and Steel Sports. <laughs> Kirsty and Sarah there, the twins holding up the Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Sport boards and of course uh, steel frames as well out there on the grid. Nick Wainwright here looking to go one better than he did earlier on. Second in race one he'll look for the win but they're all going to try as hard as they can to catch Chris Helliwell who was unstoppable three wins out of three so far and now looking for the full house there's last year's champion Carl Foster number eight you can spot Mark Biswell off a mile off as well with that bright number 35 on the second row of the grid and here we go ready to go racing Gordon Wright Flash Gordon teammates with Chris next to him on the grid as well not a great start there for the Scotsman but as they fly away down into turn one a better start this time from Carl Foster the reigning champion on the yellow bike number eight goes into second place now we're going to be able to see whether or not he has an answer for this year's championship protagonist also a good start further back there for number 65 uh, David Langley he got away very well from the line and was up into fourth or fifth, I believe, as they went into Druid's corner. And that's number 14. I think earlier on in the first uh, Golden Era Supersport race, I named that as Brad Davey. Uh, that might just be a little bit of a mistake in the programme there because listed down as number 14, Brad Davey. But of course, that isn't Brad Davey. That doesn't look like a Ducati 748 to me. That's Robin Mapp. So apologies, Robin. Uh, she's out there on a Mapp Racing Suzuki. 
Yeah, you see uh, Mark Biswell standing out on that beautifully turned out number 35 machine. Phil Cox also going around clearways, but at the front it is 64 Chris Helliwell that has the advantage from last year's champion Carl Fostoon. Third is Nick Wainwright. He was a bit closer to this group last time. Got a bit of work to do here. Then it's uh, Flash Gordon, number 11, going through from Larbert on the Sparklight Racing Yamaha. There's Sam Nicholson just going up the inside of Luke McRae. And there's Gordon right now coming under a bit of pressure from a race winner from last year, Ryan Cooper, number 26. Ryan from Leeds on the Race HQ Yamaha. Ooh, just a bit of a moment there for Chris Helliwell as he just changed direction uh, into Clearway's corner. And there is Gordon Wright taking the inside line with Ryan Cooper for company. All these guys in the top five. Halliwell going through first. Then number eight, Carl Foster. We'll have to find out between now and Donington uh, what uh, the reason is behind the number change for Carl Foster. Like I said before, he would have had the opportunity to run number one if he wanted. Uh, instead, what was he last year? 24, I think he was last year. Now he's gone to eight. But most unusual. Um, 24 seemed to be the lucky number for him. Um, but we'll see what happens when we catch up with him before Dunnington Park the next round, which is, of course, Easter weekend. The motorcycle racing season has well and truly started once again. Hopefully, though, uh, temperatures will rise a little more than this. A bit cold at the moment, although not cold in this commentary box. First place for Chris Helliwell, second for Carl Foster. Bit of a gap then back to third now. Ryan Cooper's disposed of Gordon Wright and is now tackling Nick Wainwright. Ryan Cooper's lap times of mid to late 51s at the moment. And the lap record is very close to going. Carl Foster has that lap record. Chris Helliwell on that last lap was only marginally away from it. Oh, nearly a moment there for one of the mid-pack riders going into Paddock Hill Bend. And that would have been a heart-in-mouth moment. That's not the place that you want to be doing that. Chris Helliwell it is then that has this advantage. Don't forget, if you're looking to watch a specific class with Thundersport GB, you will, uh, over the course of the season, be able to watch each class race on the Thundersport website, thundersportgb.com. If you're watching here on the TV show, and you will have seen uh, Liam Helliwell earlier on picking up a win. Uh, and so the Helliwell family are having a very good day so far. Chris picked up uh, race win number three out of three to start the season off with a bang earlier on and is on course to make it a full house. Further back there, we see Mark Biswell fighting with Russell Dodds from North Allerton. It's quite a way to travel down to Brands Hatch. There's Robin Mapp just being lapped by race leader Chris Helliwell. Carl Foster looked like he might have just been in the zone then, was just reading Chris Helliwell in a bit, but that has just cost him a little. And strangely enough, it is exactly the same situation as what happened in race one. He got caught up at Druids by a tail ender and just lost a little bit of momentum. Um, probably not enough to bother him. He uh, certainly knows how to win races. He won plenty of them last year. Of course, the first round of any championship is always dodgy ground. Some riders approach it in different ways. Some think, well, you know what? There's an opportunity here. Uh, we will get the cojones out and we'll just go flat out and see what happens. Others are totally aware that championships can be blown up and uh, go up in smoke just by having a really, really off uh, first weekend of the season. Unfortunately, some riders already uh, have ended up in Sid Cup Hospital this weekend and we send our best regards to all of those and hope we have you back as soon as possible. But the first round of any championship uh, doesn't normally tell you the full story of how a championship is going to pan out. Although you would fancy Chris Helliwell, Carl Foster and Ryan Cooper will all be there or thereabouts come the end of 2016. It is Helliwell that leads at the moment from Foster, then Cooper. Cooper's done very well from where he was. Uh, he's got past uh, Nick Wayne right now as well. Luke McRae is flying through the pack at the moment. I can tell you that David Langley uh, is leading the steel frames. There's number 49, Andy Whale, up ahead of Luke McRae. Yeah, David Langley leading the steel frames at the moment, ahead of uh, Jack Tynan and Mark Biswell. Nice to see Jack out there. Uh, Jack, of course, Thunder Sport 500 top three regular last season, deciding to have a go on a golden era steel frame machine for this year. And I'm sure 
well, we know he's got plenty of talent, so he'll soon rise his way up to the top end of this class. Chris Helliwell's lead at the front has just come down a bit there. Not a lot in it, five, six tenths, but he's not making any mistakes. And so uh, Carl Foster finding it a bit of uh, a problem to try and close him down. Mate. We just saw there uh, further back, number 95, Andy Castle, one of our Royal Air Force uh, riders who's uh, out there in this class. He's listed down actually on this time screen as a pre-national rider, so he must be one of the pre-national overflow riders that's uh, been given an opportunity to get another race here with the Golden Eras. So, can Carl Foster put a bit of late pressure on Chris Helliwell here, and has Chris, well he got, Chris Helliwell got a pit board uh, to note? Uh, because Helliwell's made light work of this championship so far this first weekend. Carl Foster could probably smell Chris Helliwell here, and he'll know that uh, 25 points here would not go amiss. They're just putting a lap on one or two riders there. Number 96, Ian Evans, and 58, Andrew Goodsell. He's running out of time, though, and just through going again, going through the traffic, Chris Helliwell is taking the advantage when it comes to uh, filtering through that. There's Nick Wainwright. Not looking like he's going to be on the podium for this race. Nick uh, was on the podium in race one. He's currently in fourth place. It doesn't look like he'll catch Ryan Cooper. Chris Helliwell, then it is, that still leads up through into Druids now. He's yeah, still just under a second, you'd have to say, ahead of Carl Foster at the moment. It's going to take some sort of a mistake here from Chris Helliwell or some trouble with some back markers if this result's going to get turned on its head. Foster's there, but he's just not close enough to really make a challenge. Here he is, last year's champion. Coming around clearways now. Winding on the power, getting onto the start-finish straight. And he'll be praying that Chris Helliwell finds himself uh, confronted with three or four riders into Druids or something in a moment in terms of traffic. Because he, he of all people, will be able to see that there's not a lot of mistakes coming from that bike out front. There's Andy Whale just up ahead of uh, Sam Nicholson, number 49 and number two. They're in sixth and seventh place respectively here in this uh, second Sparklight Racing Golden Era Super Sport and Steel Sport event. Nick Wayne right there, just trying to find a way past uh, number 96, uh, Ian Evans. So then, we come to the Closing stage, we see Mark Biswell there. He's on for another podium, by the way, in the steel frames. Jack Tynan, 196, we just saw a moment ago as well. He is on for second. Chris Helliwell on to the start, finish straight once more. He ticks off another lap and sees the last lap flag. That's a good second at uh, least, I think, he's got over Carl Foster, who might have just waved the white flag now, and there's no point pushing it if you don't want to. Drifts out wide, and he'll just have that funny butterfly feeling in his stomach as he goes down Paddock Hill Bend, around Druids, hugging the white line on the inside, and then winding on the power downhill towards uh, Graham Hill. Graham Hill looks so tight from the angle that you're on the bike when you come out of Druids and down into Graham Hill Bend. It just looks like a one-line corner, and it is quite a tight exit as well. You have to get that spot on, otherwise you can find yourself on the grass. But there no problems here. He's not put a foot wrong in this race, Chris Helliwell. And it's going to be four out of four. It'll be 100 points out of 100. He's just got to find his way past one or two more back markers. Onto the start, finish straight we go. What a weekend it's been for the Helliwell family and for Chris in particular. Four wins out of four for him. Carl Foster, the reigning champion, back on the podium. But second is the best he can manage. And... Uh, waving there to the marshals and of course to us here in the commentary box as well. Brian Cooper finished in third, Nick Wainwright managed fourth in the end, Luke McRae was fifth and Andy Whale taking sixth spot. Top three on the podium then, Chris Helliwell, Carl Foster, Ryan Cooper and in the steel frames David Langley, Jack Tynan and Mark Biswell. Let's have a look at the championship standings then as we head to Donington Park. There you can see 100 out of 100 for Chris Helliwell. Carl Foster, well that second place has lifted him up into second place overall ahead of Flash Gordon. 
Nick Wainwright fourth, Brian Cooper fifth, and Chris Frogger in sixth. In the steel sports, Langley it is with the lead ahead of Tynan Biswell, Good, Good Self, and Ian Evans. We will be back after this quick break with the final race of the show, the Dimag Golden Era Superbikes and Munnox GP1 Freshmans. See you in a bit. The Dimag Golden Era Superbikes Race 2 here, Round 1 of the 2016 Thundersport GB Championships. Thanks as ever to Sarah and Kirsty, the twins there on the front. Been a long day for them girls. We'll see you back at Dunnington Park. Golden Era Superbikes then. This is number 7 and that is a Yamaha 250. Now, the old 250 GP bikes are eligible for this class for this season. That is absolutely stunning, that uh, GP 250 bike. Bring them back. Bring them back. Anyway, away we go, down into turn one. Earlier on, John Dietzman, number one, the champion from last year, got the win, took it with ease, really, and he's got the whole shot here down into turn one. In race one, it was 71, Richard Thornton that was second. Someone going well wide in the background there. Uh, get a glimpse of who that is in just a moment. It was number 28, and that is Jordan Watling. Uh, Jordan, that was not the way to go down Paddock Hill Bend, uh, but he's recovered well. So yeah, it was Dieterman that took the win earlier from Thornton and Stedman. Richard Blunt, last year's runner-up, was in second for a long time, but then fell back and lost out on the podium overall. What can he do here? Number 13, Richard Blunt, is uh, out there on that Kawasaki, but it's the Yamaha, the back to Yamaha, that leads. Oh, lovely to hear that two-stroke flying around clear ways here at Brands Hatch Indy. Down the start, finish straight we go. Dieterman it is that leads from Richie Thornton. The top two in the first race of the top two on circuit at the moment. And now we dip into Paddock Hill Ben in third place. Is that Nick Williamson, I believe, that is in third overall? It was, and it is. And then it's Richard Blunt. Uh, further back there, we see uh, number 20, Andy Chalice from Peterborough on the CT Racing Suzuki. So let's see what these guys can do with John Dieterman in race two. Uh, nobody could catch him, it looked like, in the first race. And at the moment, we'll wait and see. Richard Blunt was certainly disappointed with his performance in the first race and now trying to close up and find a way past Nick Williamson. He certainly won't want to see that going on. And Richard Stedman there going around the outside, trying to find a way, a way around that uh, wonderful uh, 250 GP. That's a, Bruce Dunn's on that, by the way, from Warrington. Uh, on that uh, Yamaha, um, just fantastic to see it out on circuit. Brilliant sounding bike as well. Number one, John Dietzman it is that leads from uh, Richie Thornton. Then we have uh, Nick Williamson. We've got Richard Blunt up there as well. Richard Stedman trying to make up ground like we saw earlier on. Once Richard Stedman got up towards the top three or four, he really did chase down the pack so you've got to wonder whether or not St in fact Stedman's just suddenly disappeared where has Stedman gone um, am I eyes deceiving me or is Richard Stedman just completely disappeared from the front of this race yeah he's gone Richard Stedman having made so much ground up has just disappeared out of this race so uh, that means that and there he is oh and that doesn't look so good Richard Stedman uh, is down and out of this race that's on the exit I believe of Graham Hill Bend and the red flags are out Red flags are out, so we will get a complete restart then. So, a new race, effectively. Uh, it's been shortened distance. Uh, we send our best regards to Richard Stebham. We hope that you're all right, mate, because that didn't look particularly pleasant. And so we go all over again. Um, the GP250 doesn't seem to have made it for the restart either, but away we go from the line. And uh, John Dieterman's got to do it all over again, but it's Nick Williamson with the inside line this time, and that's not worked out well for uh, John Dieterman. And so it is Nick Williamson that has the advantage, heading into Druid's corner. Thornton's up there as well. And Richard Blunt has got through ahead of... Uh, John Dieterman's fallen back to fourth, so having started so well earlier on, Dieterman's got it all to do here. There's Ryan Strafford on the Continental. Uh, Honda, I think once he gets that set up, you'll see Ryan Strafford battling for podiums once more, but at the moment it just doesn't seem to all be going his way. There is Richard Blunt then, a much better start for the uh, former champion of this class and last year's runner-up. There is number 91, just going on the outside, Matt Streeter. 
number 83, uh, Ben Hollingworth. But it's Nick Williamson from Southampton that has the advantage early on on the RBM Motorsport Suzuki. He seems to change what bikes he's on um, on a weekly basis. He, I've seen him out there on Yamahas, Hondas, all sorts, but that definitely looks like a Suzuki to me as we make our way around Druids. And now Richard Blunt is going to take the inside line into Graham Hill Bend and does. Richard Blunt leads the race then. The Portico Sport Kawasaki rider, last year's runner-up, the former champion from a few years back as well. And John Dietzman now closes up, having made a bit of a bad start of the restart. The defending champion's in fourth behind Richie Thornton. Now this looks like it might be a bit more of a tasty race for us here. Earlier on we saw John Dietzman clear off and win the race by seven or eight seconds. Doesn't look like that's going to happen here. And John Dietzman may be just looking a bit uncomfortable in the early stages of this one, although he's now made it up into third place. Uh, back in fifth, looks like it might be Richie Harrison. Get a better look at that as they head up towards Druids. It is Richard Harrison, number 48 in fifth, but Blunt leads from Thornton now. Williamson pumped back to third place. John Dietman, having gone up to third, has been pushed back down to fourth again. Richard Blunt will be liking this. A bit of clear air out front. I'll repeat again, those leathers, uh, proper retro, looking good with the Portico Sport Kawasaki. So it's Kawasaki's one and two, Suzuki third, and then in fourth place, the Baxi Yamaha of the champion John Dieterman. Bit of a gap back then to Richard Harrison, who's desperately trying to get on the tails of this lot. Adrian Teasdale is up in the top seven or eight. Andrew Pollard is there as well. And so, into turn one we go, and Dieterman's up to third. He's moved back. Nick Williamson, who's actually now dropped uh, another place. Richie Thornton's in second. Richie Thornton's got that tight line on the inside on that yellow Kawasaki. Uh, looking to find a way through. So Richard Blunt it is the still leads, but not by a lot. Thornton's there in second. John Dieterman looks set to pounce on Thornton. He's in third. Nick Williamson in fourth. Can Nick Williamson hold on to these guys? That's the question. Uh, last year, he uh, spent the odd time on the podium, but uh, in large was not able to really stay with John Dieterman and Richard Blunt. These two who were going at it properly in 2015 now get the chance to meet and greet once more on the start finish straight here at Brands Hatch. Across the line we go and up pulls the Baxi Yamaha and that's a sight that Richard Blunt has seen only <laughs> well too many times last year for his own good he won't like that one bit but now he's in a proper race he won't want to see Dieterman win this one Richie Thornton is a definite threat there in third place and Nick Williamson is doing just enough at the moment to hang on to the group then still a bit of a gap back to Richie Harrison there's Chalice going through Druids and Jordan Watling as well Doncaster rider on the Electec Racing Kawasaki out of Graham Hill we go and Dieterman leads once more can he check out like he did in race one I don't think Richard Blunt uh, will be too pleased about that. I think he's got other ideas. They go into clear ways. Blunt, with the lap record, of course, set last year a 49.5. They're currently about ooh, just over a second off that. Uh, so temperatures perhaps coming into play. There is number 91, Matt Streeter, fighting with Chalice again. Those guys in ninth and tenth. They're behind Watling, Pollard and Harrison. They go into turn one. It's Dieterman, though, from Blunt. First and second around Druid's corner. Third place for Richie Thornton. Nick Williamson's last lap was just a couple of tenths slower than the group out front. Signs that maybe he's not going to be able to keep up with the pace here. Dieterman wants to stretch away, but Richard Blunt does not want to let him go. It's easier to follow than it is to lead, and Richard Blunt maybe just not quite found the pace that we're used to seeing him at yet, but this will be a little bit easier for him, trying to stay with John Dieterman out front, and now we've got two groups of two forming as uh, both Dieterman and Blunt look to check out. Ryan Stratford here has got uh, company in the shape of John Gibson, although Stratford himself will not want to be fighting for 12th and 13th places uh, throughout the 2016 season. Up towards Druids we go again then, some tail enders to deal with in a moment. Dieterman leads from Blunt, then Thornton, then Williamson. Good effort this from Nick Williamson from Southampton. He's won uh, races in this championship before. Finished as runner-up in, I think, the very first season of Golden Era Superbikes behind 
Lee Reevely, I believe, unless my maths and, and head's completely gone. There's number uh, 19, Paul Stonebanks, out there on an old Yamaha, and uh, he's just been lapped by the race leader, John Dieterman. Richard Blunt following his every move at the moment. Further back there is 34, 34 and 38. 34, Adrian Teasdale. 38 is Andrew Pollard who's uh, actually at the moment the fastest of the GP1 overrun freshmen. Uh, so he's going OK. OK, last lap then. John Dieterman, number one, and Richard Blunt, 13. Will this be the tale of these two once more in 2016, or will Richie Thornton have something to say about it? This really does mean business. Richard Blunt really could do with just getting his nose ahead of uh, John Dieterman here to prevent Dieterman from starting the year off where he left off from last season and now he's got a couple of chances left they go around clearways now and there's a bit of a door being left open is there no there's nothing being left door open at all and he's going to have to go in the slipstream or something along those lines as they make their way up towards the start finish line it doesn't look like it's going to happen across the line they go and it is John Dieterman that just takes it from Richard Blunt Blunt will be disappointed that he hasn't been able to get on terms with Dieterman there. He was closer, but he's going to have to find a bit more in the coming rounds. John Dieterman, the champion, kicks off the first two races here on TV there at Brands Hatch with a double win. The Baxi Yamaha rider. He was made to work for it though. Blunt finishing in second. Last year's runner up, Richie Thornton, third. Nick Williamson, fourth. Adrian Teasdale, fifth. And Andrew Pollard in sixth place. Here's a top three on the podium then. John Dieterman, Richard Blunt, and Richie. Thornton and then we have the freshman Andrew Pollard ahead of Matt Streeter and Ben Hollingworth now then Gold Mirror Superbike points locked on points at the top there Nick Williamson and John Dieterman Richie Thornton is in third Richard Blunt four but there is only 14 points covering the top four so we shouldn't really have to worry about that too much at the moment Ben Hollingworth leads the GP1 freshman brought to you by Manix Europe ahead of Andrew Batner Pollard and Matt Streeter That's it from Brands Hatch. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Round one is done. Round two is just around the corner. We'll see you at Donington Park.